the way home from church this morning. I don't have that far to drive, but uh, Sister Kathy and I were talking, and, and uh, I said something, and the Lord just uh, laid this on my heart. <clears throat> we'll see what he has for us, but uh, I do appreciate uh, the service and uh, the singing and the way the service went this morning. Uh, <clears throat> the... Uh, Spirit of the Lord coming by here with his convicting power, moving on hearts. And uh, even though they might have not prayed, I know that God touched their hearts. And, uh, I too got a phone call today, and, and uh, I know God's moving. I appreciate him. Uh, but if we would turn to in your Bible to book of Psalm 147, and uh, we'll start reading. Just going to read the first three verses. <coughs> I desire your prayers. It says, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for he is pleasant and praise is calling. The Lord do build up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcast of Israel. Verse 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart, and he bind up their wounds. Thank you for standing for the reading. Uh, and I thought, uh, as we was going home today, we were talking, and, and uh, I just said the word wounded. And, uh, and it just stuck with me. And, uh, and we all know what a wound is. Uh, we've all, whether it's physical or spiritually, most of us can say that we've been wounded. And, uh, and if you get a wound, then it is your natural instinct to protect that wound. Brother Harold, a few weeks ago, had shingles. I forgot about it. On the way out the door, I reached out and I patted him on the shoulder. Uh, he ducked down real quick, and, and I realized that he had a place that was wounded on his flesh. And I had... Uh, had Touch that, yeah. uh, and uh, and I thought I, I've had places that were sore, and, and you and you touch it, and and it's uh, easy to uh, uh, it don't take long to realize that that wound has been messed with, Amen. and uh, and I thought there's nothing no greater than a spiritual wound uh, when it gets down into the heart, and and uh, and I thought, but uh, Jesus, the great physician, uh, spent his whole life and his ministry, if you would, searching out wounded people. Uh, he's uh, uh, so uh, uh, in the society that we're living in today, I thought we too uh, should be searching out wounded people. Uh, and it's easy for us to look and, and uh, uh, cast a judgment rather than look at the wound. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, with uh, uh, with me being in management and needing people to work, Brother you and I can't seem to find people to work, it's easy for me to see someone that's standing there with a sign, if you would, saying that I need help, and it's easy for me to look and say, I can offer help if you would just, but I thought, I still don't know that condition. I don't know why that person's standing there. It's easy for me to cast judgment. Sure. But I thought I need to go beyond the appearance and look into the heart. All right. Find out the wound. Oh my. Uh, and, and I thought, uh, and, and it's sad, but I've, I've got two guys that's working for me now, and, and, and I have dealt with them to the point where I can't no more. I'm going to have to do something. And they're both alcoholics. And uh, because of their alcoholism, they're having a heart, they're, they're not. Uh, uh, they're not dependable. And I, and I realize that. And I, and I, and I go beyond it. And, and I see they need a job. But I need a worker. But I realize their problem is deeper than just that bottle. True. It's something deep in their heart, their soul. And, uh, and I begin to think about that. And I thought, Lord, help me to be willing to look for the wounded. Oh my. Uh, and I realize we've been talking about a lot of this here lately. And we had a men's meeting a couple weeks ago, the men's fellowship over here in the uh, the fellowship hall, and 
And uh, we begin to talk about a little bit more about the outreach and the desires that we need to do, is, things that we need to do as a church. But I thought I'm talking about on an individual basis. Yeah. We can reach out and help the wounded. Uh, we find the man on the road to uh, 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 there, and, and he come upon the uh, uh, the man that was beat. Yep. And he fell upon the, 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 among the thieves on the road to Jericho. And, and uh, uh, the man, he, he has compassion on him. First, we find those spiritual men, if you right. will. Right. Those spiritual leaders, the priests and, and the Levites, they come by and, and they see him and they pass on the other side. Uh, then we find the other man as he comes and, and he takes him up and he, and he dresses his wounds. He not only addresses his wounds, but he takes him to the innkeeper and he gives him money and, and uh, it pays for his fire and, and says, whatever I need further, I'll, I'll take care of that. Wow. Although that man went beyond uh, his uh, what, what was required of him, really. Right. Because he saw the wound. And I begin to think about that. I thought, Lord, help me be willing to reach for the wounded. I thought uh, <coughs> there's different types of wounds, uh, as I said. But, uh, uh, you know, but God was willing to reach out to all that were wounded. And, and I read a story today uh, that, uh, that I'm going to share. And it said that then, during the Vietnam War, there was a, a nurse, and uh, that she was uh, the subject of much discussion. That after a battle, she would wander away from the medical camp into the battlefield itself. And sometimes that she would personally drag uh, a soldier who was in desperate need of medical attention. Uh, more than once, uh, she was reprimanded uh, by the doctors and they told her that uh, it was none of her business to be on battlefield. Uh, and not only uh, that, she even brought in the Viet Cong soldiers along with the American soldiers. And uh, as I read the story, it went on to say that one day after a battle that an officer saw her on the battlefield uh, uh, gathering in and, and, and the suffering and the dying uh, and he began to rebuke her and, and he said, what are you doing on this battlefield? And she said without hesitation, I'm looking for the wounded. That's why I'm here. Right. And, uh, and I began to think about that and I thought, Lord, that's why we're here. Amen. To look for the wounded. Yeah. And, and I thought, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, as I begin to think about that today, a lot of times those those wounds go deeper than we even realize. Right. Uh, a lot of people that uh, that we are uh, we're reaching for and we're working with and, and uh, we're seeing the Lord deal with. Uh, the reason they're having such a hard time giving things over to God is simply because of wounds. Right. Uh, they're afraid to turn and afraid to release, afraid that someone is going to uh, once again reach in and grab a hold of that wound. Uh, something that is tender to them. And, and I began to think about that. And, and I thought the other day we were in a place and, and uh, we, we rented a, a family and, and uh, they were there and, and uh, you know, the good people. Uh, and I thought, uh, and, and, I, and I realized that anybody's children can, can stray away from God by now. And, and I prayed diligently for them. And, and, uh, and I'm still, I mean, I desire to see them drawn closer and closer to God. And, and I thank God that they're back. And, uh, but I thought anybody's children can wander away from God. Uh, but I thought uh, as I begin to think and, and you see the, the harshness that they're presenting the gospel with and, and, uh, and I thought how in the world are they ever going to reach their lost children when they are so harsh and, and those children have been wounded time and time again. Where is the love of God? Oh, we've got to have love of God in our heart to reach out for a lost and dying world. Amen. Oh, it means a lot to have compassion. Amen. <coughs> but we was at the house the other day. I came home and <coughs> from work. And my, uh, we've got those ring, door, ring cameras around the yard. And, and uh, the camera went off. And so there was motion in my backyard. 
And I looked out the back door, and here come a, a black cat up through the yard. I'm not a cat lover. Uh, cats have their place. I like them. If I can get one to stay in my garage, get rid of the mice, I'd love to have one. But I can't get them to stay there. They want to come to the house. I don't know what this, uh, uh, the uh, screens and all that stuff. But, uh, but anyway, uh, I looked, and here comes this cat. And, uh, and it was bobtailed, and I could tell looking at it that it was not born bobtailed because there was a little nub on the end of its tail that was all twisted. And, and uh, so I knew it had been cut off somehow, but I, I you know, but it's just a cat. It wandered around. And, and uh, I didn't have much compassion for that old cat. But Kelly got off the school bus. And uh, she came in the house, and as she came up on the porch, that cat had found its way to the front porch, and it rubbed up against her legs. She throws the backpack through the door, and she goes back out on the porch. And she spent the whole time she was there at the house with that cat. Right. I don't know whose cat it was, but I know whose cat it is now. <laughs> uh, because she got it in the car with her, and she took it home. And uh, she, uh, uh, Laura took it in and she uh, bathed it and, and uh, put stuff on it, from, I'm sure, for the fleas or whatever it had. And, and, uh, uh, and But as Laura called her mother back, she began to tell her, she said, this cat has been mistreated. Uh, and she began to tell her all the things that was wrong with it. And, and uh, when Kathy began to describe the need, first thing I thought is it's been in somebody's van in their car. Uh, at some point in his life, uh, uh, to be mangled up that bad, but but uh, the the cat was compassionate toward her, but she had affection for that cat, right. uh, and she took it in, and she's taking care of it, and she's got a cat at home that won't have a thing to do with her, but this cat does, and, and I thought that made a difference to her, and, and I thought that God wants us to draw close to Him, yes. so that He can draw us close. That, that we also can draw close to us. Right. Uh, he had a desire to be that way. Yeah. And I thought, uh, uh, you know, and, and we, we've got to, to be compassionate with God. Amen. Uh, you know, whenever, I don't know why this is going on this way, but it's just the way the Lord's uh, laying on my heart. But I thought, <coughs> growing up, I love both of my grandpas. Don't get me wrong. But Papa Sparks, he had kids that was my age and younger. And he was just in his 40s when I was born. And so he still worked every day. And, and uh, when I was there and, uh, with uh, Frank and Kenneth growing up and playing around the house, I just wanted the kids there in the yard, you know. Uh, we all was playing together. And, and uh, uh, you know, and I remember a time or two hugging him. I remember a time or two, him a few, several times, even after, especially after I got older, him patting on me, saying, I love you, boy, or I love you, son, or something like that. But my pal Oliver was older. And, uh, and he was a, a very compassionate person. And, uh, and I thought, I never remember, especially after I got older, and he was sitting there in the, in the uh, kitchen table, and, and he always, you know, had that little bald spot. And time and time again, I'd walk over and I'd kiss him on top of that bald spot. Love you, Paul Paul. I thought we had a very special bond. Right. Mm -hmm. And then whenever I become a grandfather, I told Sister Kathy, I said, I want to be their friend. I want them to, and I thought, I talked to my pal Paul about stuff that I never talked to nobody else. I could confide in him. I learned that I could trust him. And I thought uh, there was times that I would be upset and I could go talk to him, and he'd never tell us so. Mm -hmm. But he would always have advice for me. Right. And I thought, I, I, I love that. Yeah, I was 16 years old when he passed away, and I thought my world had come to an end. And, uh, but I thought, uh, uh, but, but I desired that. And even after he was gone, there was time for the Harold that I, that, I, that I longed for that. And I thought, uh, uh, but yet, you know, now that I'm a grandfather myself, I desire for my grandchildren to be able to confide in me. I want them to feel that compassion. I want them to feel that love that I've got to offer to them. And Lord God has got the same thing. But I thought the way God has got to offer that love, Brother you is through you and me. That's right. I thought all of us, that's the way that the Lord is offering his love to a lost and dying world. Right. And I thought, are we reaching that wounded? Are we reaching out and trying to, to draw those? And, and I want to, you know, and I've often said, Lord, I want to be willing to help. 
Lord, I'm here. I want to be able to help. But we're waiting for the wounded to come to us. Right. But we've got to go oh, to the wounded. Yeah. We've got to go search out the ones that are wounded and are lost. Yep. And I'm saying, Lord, give me that compassion. Give me that Lord, compassion. give me that compassion to reach for the wounded. I don't Romans 2, uh, Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, we read, and it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I look, there's some that can stand up and they've got a testimony of some very terrible things that they've done in their lives. There are some that can get up and give a testimony, like my wife, that she's always went to church and She's never done nothing bad, and and uh, uh, the you know, and, and she's all and, and I've always had that fear. <coughs> There's been a time in my life, uh, not to be comical, but I could be uh, because of my fear of God and the things that I had done. That if I laid down in the night and there was a clock ticking in that room, but you, know, I couldn't sleep because every time I heard that second hand click, click. I could think that could be the last click of this old heart and I'd be lost. And I thought, uh, and I'd get up and there'd be times and I'd get up and I'd get up and take a clock and I'd pack them to the living room or wherever, trying to get rid of that sound. Too too proud and too haughty to just yield my life over to God. But I thought, uh, uh, but yet, even though I've sinned and somebody else has sinned, we might look and say their sin's greater than mine and and this don't hear what they, they haven't done that. But we have all sinned Amen. and come short of the glory of God. Amen. And as somebody mentioned this morning, it don't matter how big that sin was, it was still enough sin Amen. to take us to hell. Amen. I thought we all still had to find our way to God. And I thought a lot of times we look and, and we see all that sin and, <coughs> and it's easy to say, but but I'm but I'm and, and begin to justify ourselves. True. But uh, but I thought rebellion against God is what took place in the in the Garden of Eden, and I thought that that rebellion is what began to uh, to draw. Uh, when you know we, we realized that the serpent came out and he beguiled uh, Eve, and, and then Eve gave to, to Adam. But I thought it was still rebellion against God. Right. That's all sin is, and and I thought so. So we look all the way back into the Book of Genesis, and we can find. Uh, sin, and uh, we can find that how all these things take place, and, and I thought then we can find how that wounds can begin to separate people. I thought we go back in the book of Genesis, we find a woman uh, by the name of Hagar out in the midst of a desert. Uh, she and her little son Ishmael, and, and they were outcasts of society, and Sarah had put them away, and because of jealousy in her heart, and uh, she put her servant away, and and uh, <coughs> even though her son was uh, was the son of Abraham, uh, he still he gave them just a little bottle of water, if you would, and, and took them out in the desert and put them away because of jealousy within the heart. And I thought, if we're not careful, we can look and, and because of we look and we say, "But I'm better. Mine are better than hers." And, I thought, and, and lose that compassion uh, that we need to have to outreach for those. That are lost, those outcasts that are, that are cast out. I thought that we can read, read through the Bible many times, uh, where a lot of times the, the, the very elite and the religious were willing to destroy rather than to reach out and try to help. Right. I thought, I don't know about you tonight, but I want to be willing to, to reach those that are that are lost. And uh, and I thought uh, uh, reach those that are that, that are that are dying. Uh, and uh, uh, Luke chapter 18 and verse nine, 9 it says and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves <clears throat> that they were righteous and despised others uh, two men went up into the temple to pray and one a Pharisee and the other a publican and the Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself God I thank thee that I'm not as other men are extortioners, unjust, uh, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes. I, 
uh, of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off uh, would not lift up uh, so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Uh, and, and I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that hum uh, humbleth himself shall be exalted. Amen. I thought, I don't know about you, but I want to humble myself before God. Amen. I thought, I want to bring myself down that God can use me to reach out and touch the wounded. Amen. I thought, we've got wounded every day that we come in contact with that we don't even realize. Right. I thought the, the darkness that's within the hearts of the people that we come in contact with, if we could just reach out and touch them. Just reach out and get a hold of them. As they come against the song tonight, I hope I've helped somebody. But I want, if you're if you're wounded tonight, if you're packing something in your heart that's keeping you from getting where you need to be with God, I thought, just give it over to him. Give it over. I thought he can take care of it. He can mend that broken heart. And I thought he can make us do it again. If they come against the song tonight, let's pray.